Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be reviewing the Vivo V23 5G and thanks to Vivo for sending me this review unit. Previously, I've done the review on their X70 Pro which is the premium version in their lineup and also their Y76 5G which is the more affordable range. Today, I want to talk about the V23 which kind of like rest in between these two model ranges. I'm not going to be diving deeper into the Android system because I'm an Apple user. So I do know that it runs on Android 12. So that's about it. And of course, how it looks like in person. And if you decide to skip, I place some uh, markers here, time code, so you can skip to whichever section you want to see. Or you can go to the description below where there will be chapters input in there. Let me just do an unboxing of this V23 first. It's my very first time opening. I've not seen the device in person. I've seen some photos, but I've only took out the clear wrap, so it's unboxed yet. So let's have a look at what's inside the box and how is it, okay? And my first impressions. Inside, and we have the phone. From the photos, I did see it did look a bit like an iPhone N. My first impression is that it feels like I'm holding an iPhone for the very first time. Look at the edges. Look at the sides. Uh, apparently, this is an aluminium finish. Not a stainless steel, but it does feel like a stainless steel. Probably have to check on that. Even the whole construction feels like an iPhone just on the smaller size maybe not as tall and as iphone 13 or something like that or 13 pro and slightly narrower than a 13 pro but it does really feel like 13 pro range the higher end versions with the stainless steel sides so you just get a couple of uh, yeah this was provided in literally all their phones before the x70 pro and also the y76 5g they had this um, very thoughtful casing for you to put because you want to protect this well, expensive phone right out of the box whenever you can. So you do have that protective case. Some documentations that you have here. I think again, pretty much nobody cares about that. USB-C, oh no, this is an earphone that is a normal 3.5mm jack type. And then you also have the USB-C to USB-C cable. SIM card removal tool. Okay, this is a converter that converts the 3.5mm jack or connects the 3.5mm jack on your earphone to the USB-C jack on the phone. As usual, an adapter which Apple and I think the likes of Samsung has already removed all these adapters. So again, kudos to Vivo for providing this. And this is a 44 watt charger you know it's not even just a normal 10 watt or something like that they give you one of the higher end ones which is a 44 watt charger and that's it in the box now let's talk about the phone itself the first thing that strikes you when you look at the phone is a special glass bag this glass bag according to vivo has a layer of crystal in its fluoride ag glass that kind of changes color under different angles of light shine on it so for example now you look at it it's a sunshine gold look but at certain angles then it becomes a bluish greenish kind of a hue to it I, I do find that that is quite nice of course if you want something more understated then go for the stardust black but if you want something that really appeals to you of course go for the sunshine gold and rounding off the sides initially i thought the sides were made up of stainless steel which is really nice to hold and does really give it that premium feel but according to vivo or its website it shows that it's made of aerospace aluminium but to be honest i think it's a very clever use of the material because it makes the phone lighter which is coming in at uh, 181 grams and it's also only at 7.5 mm thick so it does feel good to hold in the hand it's slightly narrower than the iphone 13 pro which i find is uh, yeah, it's also good to hold but it feels heavier obviously for the iphone because of its stainless steel but this one definitely feels good to hold in your hands and rounding out the sides you have on the right side of the phone you have your power button and of course the rocker for the volume controls and the top part i think you just have a i think one of the 
subscriber mentioned before, this seems to be an infrared like emitter spot. Correct me if I'm wrong, all right? Put it down in the comments. And on the left side of the phone is blank. There's nothing there. And rounding out the bottom, you have the SIM card, nano SIM card slot. Apparently, it's a dual nano SIM. I've not taken it out, but it's a dual nano SIM card capability with a USB-C charging port at the bottom. And of course, on the other side is the speaker grill setup. And on the front, you have a 6.44 inch AMOLED screen that has a 90Hz refresh rate. Of course, it's not like the higher end X70 Pro which has 120Hz or other flagship phones out there that would have a high refresh rate. But in my general reviews, I don't think it's much of a problem. And coming in at this price, I think it's 500 over. Let me put up the price somewhere here. At that price, I wouldn't be complaining too much, okay? Because if you have nothing to compare side by side, I think it's quite a good screen already. And beneath the screen, it's powered by a MediaTek Dimensity processor, which comes in at 8 core CPU and a 4 core GPU. It also has 8 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage space, and it's Bluetooth 5.2. Um, Wi-Fi, everything, and of course, its battery is rated at 4,200 mAh and it's also enabled by Quick Charge or the Flash Charge which, thoughtfully, they have provided this 44 watt Flash Charger in the box. So, again, other manufacturers, please try to put this back in. The phone can easily last you an entire day of usage without much issues. There are three ways to go into your phone. You can either use the fingerprint sensor or the pin method or facial recognition. And this facial recognition is also enabled by its special cameras on top. The design of the camera area is kind of like the iPhone's notch design. There are two cameras in here. One of them is a 50 megapixel camera. And of course, the other one is a wide angle, 8 megapixel. And it comes in at 105 degrees of view. So I think it's very useful. We can see from the pictures that here, you can see that when you take wide angle photos, they are pretty good. And under night conditions, the 50 megapixel camera, I think that was, is this is one of the features that they have heavily touted. Uh, you can take nice looking photos even under low light conditions as seen by the photos here. And I'm also really pleasantly surprised by the quality taken by the front facing cameras. In addition, there are two dual tone flashlights which I don't see this much in other phones, but this allows you to take great pictures or properly exposed pictures under low light conditions. And on the back, you have a 64 megapixel autofocus night camera, and you also have a wide angle 8 megapixel camera. In addition, the last camera will be the 2 megapixel macro camera. So as you can see from the photos that they have attached here, that do, they do really take quite good looking photos, good looking macros. You don't expect even more sharper images, but with its capability at that kind of price, well, again, who's complaining, right? And if you want to take videos, this guy can do 30 frames per second at 4K, not 60 frames per second. But if you want to go up to 60 frames per second, you have to step down to a 1080p resolution okay so it also does slow mo which um, is pretty much standard across and it has other pro features which you can explore further if you want to tweak the settings even more it also runs on a fun touch os 12 which is based on the android 12 so that's about it for the software side so you gotta explore that i'm not an uh, android user i'm an iphone user but in my couple of days of usage i do find that it's mm, okay pretty smooth and uh, responsive so that's my only thought about the software in the phone so lastly, who do I think this phone is for? For anybody who appreciates the price is at, who wants to take great looking or do a lot of vlogs or take a lot of selfies, who wants to have a very capable triple camera system, macro shots, night camera, and of course, it's good solid build quality, which I find can be even comparable to the iPhone 13 Pro series, okay? Certain angles or certain ways, but this is a very good deal. So I do hope that you like this video. I've tried to um, let you see its first looks and of course in general, importantly, how it handles in certain situations. And thank you for watching this video. Hope you like and subscribe and please hit that notification button so I can produce more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.